Are you looking for a device to play all of your Android games, your entire PS2 collection, and even some Switch emulation? You're in luck because this is the iNodin 2 and it's got some beefy specs. Before we dive into this beefcake of a handheld, we're giving away a Steam Deck at the end of May. If you'd like to have a chance of winning, subscribe down below and check the community tab at the end of May to see who won. Now back to the Odin. So this is the iNodin 2. It's an Android-based handheld device that's pretty much a blank slate. And this blank slate doesn't really come with an emulation front end that when you turn it on, it's going to load right into it. It's a whatever you want to do kind of device. And it comes with a ton of different fantastic hardware options. So let's dig into this beefy five-layer hardware device and see what those options are. And here we have the Ein Odin 2 Max in the color rainbow, adorned with a 6-inch IPS 1080p screen. It's got Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 5.3, comes with Android 13, and an 8,000 milliamp hour battery. So this battery is very chungus. Comes with a fan, in addition to 65 watt quick charging, which is very nice because this battery is gigantic. Onto the buttons. We have A, B, X, Y buttons that are squishy and not clicky, but almost clicky. We have start, select, home, and back buttons that are all clicky and not squishy. We have two joysticks with lights around them that are clicky and not squishy. We have a D-pad that is clicky and not squishy, but almost squishy. It's like it's in between. On the top, we have L1 and R1, which are clicky and not squishy. And we have L2 and R2, which are Hall Effect triggers that are hollow. The sticks are Hall Effect sticks as well. In addition, now on the sides, we have fancy light bars. On the bottom, we have a headphone hole and a USB-C charging and data port. On the top is much more interesting. We have an SD card slot, a micro HDMI out, a heat vent, a volume rocker that is clicky and not squishy. In addition to a power button and fingerprint reader, that is clicky and not squishy. And on the back we have a giant intake in addition to two back buttons that are clicky and not squishy. Overall this entire device feels very matte and very grippy even though there's no knurling. And with that big word out of the way, let's move on. So as you can tell, this device is quite a package. It has a fantastic screen, large battery, it's a bit bigger so it feels like more of a console, and it comes with a bunch of lights and huge speakers. So these really sound fantastic. And this all culminates into it feeling like it's a console and not just a phone with two controllers slapped to the sides. And what really makes that more so than anything else is gonna be the software. So let's take a look at the software now and see what I think is the best case scenario for this device. Now this is the bare bones software experience. This device does not come with a front end completely configured already or any of the emulators downloaded. This comes with a base stock Android experience in addition to all of the other software that I put on there for the controller to work, fan speed to work, and key mapping and button overlays on the software. So if you would like a front end emulator set up, they do have a front end that they've built where basically it just lays out all of the emulators for you, which is fine, but this thing does not come with any games and this does not come pre-configured. But for emulation, we're going to go through this rather quickly because the emulation on this device is incredibly beefy. Anything from the 16, 32, or 8-bit eras all below work perfectly fine. The Game Boy Advance runs perfectly fine on this device. Stuff like the Nintendo DS also runs on this device just fine. Moving up to harder stuff to emulate, the GameCube runs great on this device. You can run it at multi-resolution up to 4x and I was having no issues. And then moving even faster and farther up this is PSP. Works totally fine and you can run it multi-resolution. Moving beyond that, the PlayStation 2 era, we are running the entire collection, even with a little bit of upscaling here. Now for Nintendo Switch, you can do this on this device, but we are not going to be going over that because this is uh, redacted information. The Nintendo Ninjas have been to my house and they have been throwing shurikens into my front yard every few evenings. So we're going to switch that from here. If you'd like to dive deeper into that, you, there's a way to Google it and figure it out for yourself. It plays pretty well on here, but not the whole collection. So this device is incredibly powerful and can handle pretty much anything on the emulation side of things in addition to great Android games. Things like Diablo Immortal, Pokemon Unite, and any sort of game you can throw at this native on Android will run completely fine. This leaves us with something like Xbox Game Pass, which runs totally fine on this but will depend on your connection. 
I noticed I was having some heavy internet traffic at the time of filming this and noticed that I was getting a little bit of lag, but it wasn't due to the device. All in all, anything you can throw at this thing within the Android ecosystem will run on this device and will run very well. I think Ayn has done an incredible job with their software suite and adding the beefiest amount of hardware to this device and backing it up with some great software. So from a software standpoint, this is really the highest package you need right now. This device has enough power, even at the lowest skew of eight gigs, to run pretty much anything you want to run. At that point, we're running into issues of Android isn't optimized to use that much power. So for what we're at now, I think this is a fantastic piece of hardware that will last a very long time. But this does come at a cost, which is your hard-earned dineros because this console ain't cheap. The lowest spec of this device comes currently in at $300 from Ayn's website. You could pay a lot more for higher end specs, making it the Pro or the Max, but for what you get, it's kind of better to go with the baseline here because I don't really think you're gonna need that extra RAM. And I don't think we're gonna be leaving any power on the table with going with the base model. Any more money than the $300, and we're basically looking at something like deciding between a Steam Deck for 300 bucks or this for 300 bucks. So this also brings up, there are a ton of different Android-based devices out there for different price categories. So if you're looking for a high-end Android device that plays and works specifically through Android, I really do think for this price point, you get what you need for anything on the Android ecosystem. And now there are a bunch of different handhelds in this category between two and $300 for Android devices. And that's a lot to talk about. So look for an upcoming video where I compare my top five Android based devices. And this one's in there. This does bring us to what I like and don't like about this device. It has the pedigree of a regular name brand console like a Nintendo Switch, which is very hard to achieve. And I think for $300, that's not a bad deal at all. And while there aren't very many things I can complain about on this device, one of them is that the baseline model is only black and that's all you can get in that colorway. So it'd be nice to see all the same shells that are the same hardware size be all the different colors. That's a nitpick and black is totally fine. Also, don't buy these things from Amazon. On. They are way marked up and they are way cheaper on Ayn's website. And a small gripe is when you get the device, you actually have to set up the entire device, meaning that it doesn't come with an emulation front end loaded onto it with any game. So that may turn off some people that are just looking for an emulation handheld like the Anbernic RG556 that comes preloaded with a bunch of the ROM catalog already in there. I'm okay with it because I prefer doing it this way anyway, and I prefer using my own ROM library, everything being in the right language, right region, and the most up-to-date build of whatever emulator I'm going to be using. All in all, I really think that this is the beefiest Android device on the market right now, and if you're getting this device and getting into this device at this point, I don't think it's a bad option at all at any price point, because even if you go with the low-end model, the 8 gig model, which I would recommend, 8 gigs is still a lot. You're pushing plenty of power, and even if you can't play a lot of the newer Android games down the line, you'll still be able to play any of the emulators you're running now. In addition, to any game streaming service that you're going to use in the future, which it doesn't take very much to stream games in this console feel, plus the screen is pretty fantastic. So if you'd look to look or decide on a different Android-based device, check these videos out because they're not equally as beefy. They do sometimes help, help the wallet category, or maybe you want something smaller. Give one of these a watch. They don't smell. They're mildly beefy, but not totally beefy. I'm just really trying to see how many times I can say beefy before you click away. Goodbye.